to move the hand of God. You may be seated for a minute. Praise, the Bible says it's comely. The turnaround power of praise is the topic for today. The anchor scripture is going to come from Second Chronicles, chapter 20. It's really from 20 to 22, but I'm just going to read one scripture and then we'll dive in. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Siah, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Huh. Praise is Acknowledging God, acknowledgement of who God is. Faith, praise is expression of faith in God. I'm going to share some scriptures with you. All of us in this room, at some point in our life, will have a situation we can't find an answer to. Praise is a war instrument. Praise is a door opener. Praise is a lifter. Praise shatters barriers by the hand of God. The acknowledgement of God in this Second Chronicles chapter 20, in the beginning part of the chapter, the Bible says that the king, Jehoshaphat, got a message that there were three kings who were coming against him. We've talked about this before. He was afraid. And because he was afraid, he called on to God. Praise means that I recognize God for who he is. Let me read you acknowledgement of who God is. In Revelation chapter 15, the Bible says, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. If someone told you to describe me, who I am, you probably, my wife would probably ask, in what capacity? As my husband, the father of my children, the pastor, what, what, are, you, what are you looking for? What do you want me to tell you about him? That he's my husband, the father of my children. Which aspect do you want? So, to praise God, we have to have a, a full understanding of who he is. Number one. In Psalm 90 verse 2, it says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. I haven't started saying anything yet. I'm just acknowledging who God is. I'm not sure who I'm speaking to this morning. Sometimes we think just clapping is praise. Whatever you do with understanding takes you farther than without understanding. The Bible says he pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. So if I don't preach because there's few people before me or there's nobody before me, I am not the one that wrote the word. I'm not the one that said it should be preached. 
I'm just a servant. I'm just a spoon being used to make the soup. Amen? I test the soup first. But I didn't make it. I didn't write the recipe. Recipe, <laughs> recipe is measures, time, and patience. Listen to me. Listen to me. When I give you a recipe to make anything, I will tell you what sizes to put in the container. I will tell you the timing to put it in the container and what to do afterward. I will tell you what the result will be at the end if you put it in the oven, depending on what you're making the recipe for or out of, it will tell you what the end result will be. So if you apply it, if you use the recipe the way I gave it to you, whatever product it is will come out just like my own. Amen? So number one, acknowledgement of who God is in praise. Number two, praise is an expression of faith in God. An expression of faith in God. Now, when we give instructions as humans, we have an expectation. Amen? When I tell you to come here, I'm not just asking you to come here. I have something in mind either to do for you or for you to help me do. Hmm. So when you come to me with expectation, you are easily, you react easily and quickly when I give you the instruction because you came with expectation. Look at this. In Revelation, the same Revelation 15, verse 3 says, And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, hmm. and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. If I don't know, if I can't remember what God has done for me, I can remember what he did for my wife. I can remember what he did for Isa, Friday into Saturday. I can remember what he did for Chooks when his tires flew off. And he didn't hit anybody. He didn't get in a head-on head collision. That... Those are possible things that could have happened that I've seen God do. Y'all don't hear me. So if I don't think of anything God has done for me directly, I can think of things he has done for other people. And it makes me thankful that he is who he is. God said, the psalmist wrote in chapter 22 of the book of Psalms, right around verse 3. It says that God inhabits the praise of his people. Why does God inhabit the praise of his people? Because Judah, the meaning of Judah is praise. I'm not going to go there. So if God inhabits the praise of his people, every time I, I willfully and joyfully praise God from my heart, I'm in his presence. Psalm 100 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his course with praise. Again, see your mic is acting up. And his courts we praise. Let's use this church as an example. We have someone that sits as, a, as my admin assistant. My office is back there. Let's say the code to enter this door is Thanksgiving. 
In order to enter by office, you got to be praising. So you enter the gates with thanksgiving. You enter the courts with, with praise. When you enter there, I'm seated there. That means you have free access to me. God says to see me or to be in my presence, nobody's ever seen God and live, you need to praise me. Why do I need to praise him? I acknowledge who he is, and I acknowledge what he has done. So in his presence, what happens? What are the things that God is able to do for me when I praise my way into his presence? I'm going to tell you some stories today. Number one, God can open the heavens for you. The Bible tells us, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. He said, prove me now, won't I open up the windows of heaven? Mm. So God is able to open his windows in heaven for you in his presence. Amen? Y'all act like you don't believe me. God said, when you do the things that I ask you to do, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing. It's the same God, isn't it? So we are reminded, while I'm praising him, opening the doors and windows of heaven are possible. What else can God do that he has done before? He can open the earth for me. God, we say we call it earthquake or whatever else we call it. Scientifically, we give it names, but we don't fully understand. It is the same God in number 16 that opened up the earth and swallowed up people who were disturbing Aaron and Moses that he sent on an assignment. So that same God is able to open the earth for me. The same God can command the birds of the air. I want you to know that the power in praise, the turnaround power of praise, God can do anything in praise. God inhabits the praise of his people. So if he can open the heavens, he can also open the earth. He can command animals that he created to serve us. Look what he says. He told Elijah. He said, and the word of the Lord came unto him, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook, Sherry, that is before Jordan. <laughs> and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. Birds of the earth that you and I can talk to and they listen to us. In the presence of God, while I'm praising him, God can command anything that he has created to do me a favor. God can command even the snake and he did in the wilderness to bite those who were complaining. Amen? And they died from the poison, from the snake. And God, the same God told Moses, I want you to create an image out of a 3D object, put it on a pole, the image of a snake, put it on a pole, everyone that's bitten by the snake, if they look upon that thing, they won't die from the poison. Just looking. Faith. So the same God can command the fish to be a bank. I'm showing you things God has done and that he can do for you in praise. Turn around power of praise. He says in the book of Matthew that we're talking to Peter. They said, does your master pay taxes? Peter gave him an answer as best as he could. But Jesus was looking. So when Peter said, came, Jesus asked him a question. Before Peter could answer, Jesus said, look, go to the sea. Cast a hook. The first fish that comes up, open his mouth and take a gold coin out of it. Yeah, don't hear me. 
Peter is a fisherman. He fishes with net. That means when I throw the net out, I could, I could pick up shoes. I could get uh, fillets. I could get, uh, what do you call it, tilapia. I get anything that is in the ocean. But Jesus says, take a hook and put it in the sea. The first fish that comes up, open his mouth and take the coin out of the mouth and go pay the taxes for you and for me. That means God has the capacity when you are in his presence to command anything in the world to favor you. Your job is to praise him. In Matthew 17, he says, Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea. That's Matthew 17, 24 through 27. And cast an hook, not your net. A hook, personal and individual, singular. In a vast sea, not a river, not a stream, not a pond, a sea. He says, cast an hook, not two hooks, one. And take up the first fish that cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take that and give unto them for me and you. My bank is not in the water. Is yours? My bank is where I can find it. But God can make a fish be your bank when you praise him. What else can God do? In Psalm 67, verses 5 and 7, he says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Look at this. It's only when we praise him, then shall the earth yield her increase. Only when we praise God does the earth we are standing on yield her increase. And God, even our God, shall bless us. Only he prayed. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So even the earth you and I are standing on has the capacity to bring up some stuff to my benefit. So I'm standing on my blessings, but because I will not praise him, the earth does not yield his increase. Y'all don't hear me. In, in the prophetic book of Joel, chapter 1, verse 12, he says, the vine is dried up, <laughs> and the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree the palm tree also. In Nigeria, the palm tree, the, the leaves don't fall. It's always green, no matter what. In dry season, in rainy season, the palm tree is the same. But it says, in Joel 1, it said, the vine is dried up, including the palm tree also. The apple tree, even all the trees of the field, are withered. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of man. No praise. We're not thankful. Thankfulness leads to praise. I told you this morning when you opened up your eyes, you didn't wake yourself up. God woke you up. And I gave you an example. If you took an alarm clock and went to the cemetery and set it off, nobody will wake up because they're done with this side of life. So if you can wake up, you need to thank God. And if you can thank God, you can also praise him. Number six, praise will bring down barriers in your life. <laughs> Some people will look for jobs. They have this situation. They don't know what to call it. They've been trying. They've prayed. They've fasted. They've done all they can. But this thing is still there. In Joshua chapter 6, it tells us that Joshua, according to God's instructions, led the children of Israel to Jericho. God said, I'm going to give you this city. But you don't need to fight. You need to praise me around the wall. Once a day for seven days. The seventh day, 
do it seven times. And the Bible says, let me read it so I'm not telling the story. It says, so the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with great shout that the wall fell down flat. The barrier that kept them from going into Jericho fell down flat. There was no bulldozer that could have taken this wall down. But the praise brought the wall flat down. Y'all don't hear me. In Acts 16, verses 25 through 30, I'm not going to read all of it, talk about Paul and Silas in prison. They had killed some other disciples. These two were going to go next. The Bible says at midnight they sang. And the prisoners heard them. Then the earthquake came. All the gates in the jail blew open. Praise. All the doors in the jail blew open. Even the shackles on their hands and feet got broken. Praise. So the praise that I'm teaching you about, I'm reminding you of things God has done. And it's possible for him to do in your life when you praise him. There's a healing in praise. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. In Jeremiah 17, he says this. This is a prayer. He says, hear me, O Lord. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. He says, save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. What does that mean? Because I praise you, heal me, O Lord. Heal me because you are the one I'm praising. Now, now, in the same order, in number eight, in praise, there's recreation of body parts. I'm just trying to bring to your remembrance what God has done through praise. So when you praise him, you can expect any of this. This is not an exhaustive list. Recreation of parts. In John chapter 9, the Bible talks about a man who was born blind. Listen now. AJ, quit the noise. A man that was born blind. And the disciples saw the man and said, Jesus. Who sinned, this man or his parents? Jesus says none. He's blind so you can see the glory of God. And Jesus took the spittle, mixed it with mud, and put it in the man's eye. And so go to the pool of Siloam and wash. The man did, and he came back seeing. So God has in his arsenal, when you praise him, spare parts for you. This man was born blind, and the Pharisees were arguing. There was a big argument. What is this? Who did this? Why did he do this? He did it on Sabbath day. It didn't matter. All God was trying to show us is whatever is in us that is broken, he can replace it. But when we are in his presence is when he does it. He can't do it from afar. If I'm walking far from God, I can't get my parts replaced. Amen? That's in John, John 9, 1 through 7. So, the teaching today reminds us when we are praising God, what has chased us into the presence of God? What do we know about this God we are praising? The Bible says in healing, it says in Mark 6, 13, Jesus gave his disciples power to go preach the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead. In 6, 13, they anointed people and they were healed. In the same vein, healing <laughs> belongs to us that are God's. But there are some things we need to do to be able to garner this 
healing. In the presence of God is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. What am I telling you this morning? Praise as we go to Thanksgiving on Thursday. Don't let Thursday be the only day you give God thanks. Some people don't even bother giving thanks. They just cook and eat. The practice is to be thankful to God. Thankfulness will lead you to praisefulness. Praisefulness will give you access to everything God has ever done before in this lifetime. Amen? Amen. So as we rise to our feet this morning, I'm going to open the door of the church. Told you I wasn't going to keep you long. I'm going to open the door of the church for those who want to join as members. If you have a Christian experience or you want to come to us, you want to be baptized. Understand.